if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about two more categories of waste and we will see how these kinds of waste harm us, how they're responsible for uh, creating pollution and what is the correct method of their disposal. So the first category is of agrochemical waste. As the name tells us, these are substances, chemicals which are used in agriculture. So chemical, that is those chemical substances and in uh, agriculture. There are few important chemicals like pesticides, herbicides, weedy sites and so on. Now normally what happens including fertilizers excessive normal quantity of fertilizer which is required is it's helpful but if there is excessive use of fertilizer then that excess fertilizer is considered as waste or it is going to result into pollution now what happens is in agricultural fields uh, the farmers they use fertilizer Fertilizer is normally added to enrich the soil quality and farmers if they are not aware of uh, the chemical composition and if they are not aware of this harmful effect of excess of fertilizer, what is the normal uh, perception that more fertilizer means more nutrient to the plant, we will get better crop. So they keep adding excess of fertilizer. Same is applicable for pesticides and herbicides or weedicides. They want to kill the pests, they want to remove the weeds. So what they do is they use excessive pesticides or herbicides. All these excess of chemicals, they flow along with runoff and they enter into water body. Reach the water body along with run off water. So whenever there is rainfall or if there is excess of irrigation, then the water flows and it takes all those chemicals along with it and ultimately it reaches the water body. And when all these substances are reaching the water body, there is water body which is getting nutrient rich and these nutrients encourage the growth of algae and that results into algal bloom. This is also going to result into eutrophication. So all this results in eutrophication that is aging. We have studied this. There is a natural process which is a very slow process when the lake or the water body becomes shallower because of its aging process. But our contribution speeds up this uh, eutrophication process. It is called cultural eutrophication or accelerated eutrophication. We have done this in the previous uh, videos. So eutrophication takes place. It results or it causes algal bloom. And when we talk about these pesticides, one such pesticide is DDT. So it enters water from the water into planktons, then small fishes, larger fishes and then as it moves in the tropic level its concentration increases and this is known as biomagnification. So these are the problems which are caused due to excessive use of agrochemicals. So ultimately it is going to result into water pollution and that water pollution then enters into the life forms into various trophic levels. So this is one. How do we control it? Use pesticides, 
in required quantity. Switch to biological agents. Instead of chemical, we can use biopesticides. Instead of chemical fertilizers, we can use manure. So this problem can be avoided by using biological substances. That is biopesticides, manure. If we switch from chemicals to organic substances, any even if this is in excess, it will be decomposed by the microbes. So it is not going to cause any kind of damage or it was it is not going to result into any kind of pollution. So this is one uh, way of dealing with agrochemical waste. The next is radioactive waste. Now radioactive waste is uh, produced from the nuclear power plants. So from nuclear power plants, the fuel, the radioactive substance which they are using to generate electricity, some part remains, which is the waste, which has to be disposed of. And the second is in case of some accidents. So if there are some accidents, then this radioactive substance would leak. And then it results into serious kind of uh, damage or we can even call it disaster. So radioactive substances release radiations like alpha, beta, gamma rays. And these radiations, they damage biomolecules. One such special biomolecule which gets damaged is DNA. And if DNA gets damaged, then it results into either mutation or cancer. So these radiations ultimately cause mutations and cancer. So nuclear power plants are required to generate uh, energy or electricity. But the waste which is generated, how do we take care of that waste? And if an accident takes place, then the things are beyond our control. So the nuclear power plants should be properly maintained. There should be proper checkups that there is nothing which is weak resulting into leakages. So all those uh, precautionary measures must be taken. But the nuclear waste is to be properly disposed. The disposal is uh, expensive, time consuming. What is done is whatever waste remains, it is first solidified. It means that the waste is first uh, put into liquid glass and as the glass cools down that slab which is formed is going to have that waste inside. So suppose this is the glass and here is the waste. So you have trapped that waste inside that glass slab. Now this glass slab is placed in canisters. These boxes, these are concrete boxes which are lined uh, with tiles, special type of tiles from all the sides, from inside and outside. And then these boxes need to be buried about 50 meters, uh, sorry, 500 meters underground. Same thing can be done at the sea bottom. And if it is dumped in the sea bottom, then we can uh, put that uh, canister little lesser meters deep into the uh, seabed. But this is the proper uh, method of nuclear waste disposal. There are two major accidents which took place due to uh, leakages in nuclear power plants. And one, one was Chernobyl. This is the name of the power, nuclear power plant and this is called Chernobyl accident. Third is Three Mile Island. 
both are the places where there are nuclear power plants and these are the two main major reported accidents in the nuclear power plant and in both these accidents thousands and thousands of people died and thousands and thousands developed these kind of problems and when nuclear explosion or nuclear waste is released the substance remains in the atmosphere and it keeps releasing those radiations for a very very long period of time so this is radioactive waste the disposal is uh, there is a proper guideline the way this waste should be disposed of and to avoid any kind of accident proper measures precautions must be taken now in the next part we will take up some more important things from this chapter.